Hello again everyone, it's Mr. Most Days Off, and I am back once again to talk to you about the WWE Cruiserweight Classic. It is the first night of round two, and we are down to the Sweet 16. Only two matches tonight, but they are really good, and particularly the main event. I was a little bit surprised at the way the show is laid out from a timing standpoint, as uh, the first match was shorter than I anticipated, but the second match was everything that you wanted it to be and more. Man, uh, we'll, we'll get to it for sure, but a hell of a match. Before we get too far into that, I wanted to break down what we've got left remaining is we've got Tazawa versus Jack Gallagher. We've got Drew Gulak versus Zack Sabre Jr. Gnome Dar versus Ho Ho Loon. Brian Kendrick versus Tony Nese. Kota Ibushi versus Cedric Alexander, as we was our main event tonight. TJ Perkins versus Johnny Gargano, who put on a hell of a show last week. And Lindsay Dorado versus Rince Swan. I uh, passed over on accident to Jiri versus Grand Metallic, which is the opening match that we got tonight. Um, my bracket, as you know, was busted entirely last week, so I did go ahead and put in my predictions for the new bracket starting with round two, and I'm already sad to say that I fucked up the first match. I did not expect Grand Metallic to put or go over to Jiri on this one. I thought that they were going to save that rub for the next round, but looking at some of the names they got, I guess that makes sense. But as uh, we'll get to the match a little later, but Grand Metallic does go over to Jiri in the first in the first match tonight. Uh, going back to at the top of the uh, left hand side of the bracket, I, uh, I I really want Jack Gallagher to go over to Zawa just because he was so fun to watch and he uh, the crowd was really into him. But unfortunately, I just don't see it happening. I think that he's a little bit too much comedy to some extent. Um, not to say that he's not insanely talented. He's very very technically inclined, but he it, there is an air of of humor for sure with his gimmick and. I don't know that they're going to let that ride into the corner final, so I do predict that Zawa will go over Jack Gallagher next week, though I would not be sad to be wrong about that one. Uh, moving on to Drew Gulak versus Zack Sabre Jr. I mean, come on. Zack Sabre Jr. is definitely going to win that match. Uh, I think it'll be a hell of a match, though. I really like Drew Gulak. Um, I think that he put on a hell of a performance earlier on in the tournament, and I think that paired up with somebody like Zack Sabre Jr., we will see a good match out of these two. Gnome Dar versus Ho Ho Loon. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I just don't understand the decision that they went with Ho Ho Loon to go over. I can't remember who he was paired up against. Uh, let's see, he he fought uh, Daivari in the first round, and Daivari was like the only dude the entire tournament so far to really play up that heel. He, I mean, that guy was trying to not be liked, and he was doing a damn good job at it. I thought that was a weird choice for Ho Ho to win. I definitely don't think that he's going over Gnome Dar in the next round, but we'll see. Uh, moving on to the other side of the bra of the bracket, we've got the Brian Kendrick versus Tony Nice. I do predict that Brian Kendrick will go over here, very much like I felt about the Tajiri role, though. I could easily see them using this as a way to push Tony Nice, just because I uh, I do remember saying that when I first saw him, he looks like the type of guy that he looks like a WWE superstar. He's got the build that they look for, and I could see them definitely getting behind this guy. So it could happen, but I, I my prediction is that Brian Kendrick will go over in this one. Uh, we have. Koto Ibushi tonight, we already said we'll get to that in the main event, but the next one down would be TJ Perkins and Johnny Gargano. I don't think after the story we got with Gargano last week that they are going to let TJ Perkins upset him, so I definitely think we'll see Gargano moving on in this one, Johnny Wrestling. And lastly, we got Lince Dorado and Rich Swan. Um, man, I hope they go with Lince Dorado. I know that Rich Swan was really, really over, and I thought he was a, a really good wrestler, but the dancing thing was just too much for me. So I, I want to see more of Lince. I thought that still, ugh, man, maybe not after tonight, but up until tonight, definitely my favorite match of this tournament has been Lince Dorado and Mustafa Ali. I think that, that stole the show so far, so I would really like to see Lince go further into this one. That's going to bring us to our first match of the night, which we did get to Jiri versus Grand Metalik. I already said that it, that he did win. There's a few interesting part, uh, parts of this match. 
Uh, one of them was actually a, an interesting hold at the beginning, where even the Daniel Bryan had said something about like I, I just don't know what to call it. It looked like it looked like uh, Grandma Talik had put his or put Tajiri's head in. Or, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. It looked like Tajiri had shoved Grand Metallic's head up his ass for lack. Of, there, there's really another way to describe it, and uh, and commentary seemed to agree. It was an interesting attempt at a submission hold for sure. Uh, man, though, Metallic has some springboard skills, and I definitely think, based on what we saw tonight, and especially with him getting the rub from Tajiri, that they have their eyes on this guy for the upcoming cruiserweight division on Monday Night Raw. I would not be surprised that not only will we obviously be seeing him going further into this tournament, where he looks to be facing most likely Tazawa, but possibly Jack Gallagher, depending on the outcome of that match, the outcome of that match, excuse me, that I definitely think that they've got their eyes set for this guy as a future star. And, and they're going to need some of this talent to fill the roles on Raw as well as NXT. We've already seen some of the names make appear appearances. Last week on NXT, we saw Sean Maluda debut against a match with Hideo Itami. Uh, I know that there, uh, we'll go ahead and spoil this, that uh, I saw that Koto Ibushi had, had made an appearance at NXT. So you know they're looking at some of this talent, and I think some of it will go straight to Raw when they get that cruiserweight division, when they get that started up. Grand Metallic wins with the Metallic Driver, which is his finisher. It honestly looks a bit dangerous to me, just uh, the way that he has the neck tucked. I always uh, worry about those types of things, but it is a really devastatingly cool move. And while this match didn't actually go as long as I had thought it would, seeing as there is only two matches, uh, I, it definitely had me curious for, to what we were going to see with uh, the main event tonight. Which, moving on to the main event, we had... Of course, Koto Ibushi versus Cedric Alexander. And from the get-go, this was a really, really good match. As I already said, Koto Ibushi has actually already debuted on NXT, so I, I think the company obviously sees big things for them. Uh, there is a moment in this match where Koto Ibushi went for his Golden Triangle Moonsault, missed, uh, Cedric hit him with a splash out from over the top rope, a dive from over the top rope, and... Man, just the selling by both of these guys is just on point for both men. I, I I actually think the edge goes a little bit to Cedric Alexander. There was a few things that I saw from him, the way that he would kind of wheeze when he was uh, supposed to have the neck the the wind knocked out of him. Excuse me, things of that nature. These were were really really cool moments and just really added to the match. This match went on for a very long time, but and the commentators did start to, to... I'm sorry, let me say, a very long time for this tournament so far. And the commentators did start to note that, you know, they had passed the 10-minute mark, and then they had passed the 15-minute mark, and tried to imply that there is a chance that they could hit that 20-minute time limit, which that really started to bother me a little bit, just because I feel like this would be another time that they could have added to the realism of this tournament if they would have actually had a timer on screen for these matches. Like, I feel like if these are going to have rules like a 20-minute disqualification, that they should have had, like, a clock so that we can see what this match is going to. I think that would make it even more exciting as we got around these 15-minute marks and things of those nature. Uh, it, it would just make, make it more entertaining for us and, and make it seem a little bit more real. There was a point on the top rope where Cedric Alexander reversed a move from Koto Ibushi, and he ended up doing a flip over him. And I was wondering, it almost looked like this was a fuck-up, and he was just making a save there. Either way, if it was intended or not, it was super cool, and it led into, a, it led into another cool sequence as well. But uh, ultimately, this match does end with Ibushi hitting the Golden Star Press, which that's this match was, was awesome. Cedric Alexander kept hitting... Koto Ibushi with everything over and over again, and Koto Ibushi just kept kicking out. The only thing that kind of bothered me is that I feel like Koto Ibushi should have finished just a little bit stronger. He did finish with the uh, Golden Star Press, but I feel like after everything that he kicked out of, it would have been nicer if he would have like hit it with like a flurry of kicks, but ultimately this match was absolutely incredible. 
at the end of this match, we actually cut to Corey Graves, which I really like the way they do these little segments where it's got, like, Corey, like, standing in the... It, they've got, it like, a digital outline where he's, like, standing in the screen. It's really cool looking. I, I, I like the way they use that a lot. But he tells us that next week we're actually going to have three matches, which... I find interesting that they're not going to keep that consistent. It makes me wonder uh, what the pacing is going to be from here on out. Cause I was trying to figure out counting ahead, but two matches at a time to see if that worked. But then they announced that there's going to be three, but we do have Tozawa versus Gallagher next week. I think that's going to be cool. I think that it's going to be a really good time to see Gallagher one more time in the ring. But unfortunately I think at least for this tournament, that will be it. Uh, Noam Dar is going to go against Ho-Ho Loon. Again, I don't see any way that Ho-Ho is going to go over again. He's just, he's too, I don't know, he's too happy. He's too happy to be a fucking wrestler. We need some more evil in this thing. Uh, and then Brian Hendrick versus Tony Nese. This is actually one that I do wonder if we might not see an upset, but I still am standing with Brian Hendrick is going to be the one to actually go over in this one. Um... At the end of this match, too, there was a point where Mauro Ronaldo did say that this was the type of match that in losing was going to raise Cedric Alexander's stock. And I agree, don't get me wrong, I just don't necessarily think that's the role of an announcer to say that line. I feel like that is a little bit odd. In, in a world where it's a fighting man's world, losing should never be a good thing. And I, I understand what they're trying to do there, but I just feel like that's something that the fans could come to that conclusion on their own without being force fed it by commentary. Maybe that's just me. Um, at the end of this match, we pan back to after Corey Graves tells us about the matches we'll be seeing next week. We pan back to Cedric Alexander walking away from the ring. It seemed like Koto Ibushi may have left it to him because the crowd was absolutely going nuts for him. They were cheering things like, please sign Cedric. Cedric was crying. And a kind of a cool moment occurs when Triple H comes out, grabs Cedric, and basically responds to the crowd chanting, please sign Cedric. Okay, I will. And he shakes his hand and he pulls him to the back. So who knows when or where we're going to see Cedric Alexander, but I would guess that he is going to be in the NXT or WWE ring very, very soon because the dude is got star power. Um, uh, Koto Ibushi is already a star. He's already established. I had never heard of Cedric Alexander before this tournament. I was impressed with him in the first round, but working with a guy like Koto, this was fucking awesome. And I'm one that says people use that chant too much. This was well-deserving of it. Anyway, as predicted, round two definitely got off to a stronger start that round one did. Uh, still suffers a little bit from the fact that there just haven't really been... It, it's been very straightforward. There's been no, no, no real heel work. It's all just been competition, which is fine. But I feel like a little bit more drama would spice up this thing just a little bit more. We'll see what's to come. We still have got plenty of time for that. Uh, three matches next week, so that'll be fun. Before I get out of here, let me tell you that I am on Twitter at Mr. Most Days Off. Obviously, this YouTube channel where we'll also be having weekly movie reviews. My friend the Whiz Kid and I will be doing Sausage Party this week. Please come check that out. Give it a like. Give it a follow. Give it a comment. Check it out. See if you like it. Uh, I will be back next week. Hopefully, Bill will be back to join me, and we will be breaking down week two of round two of the WWE Cruiserweight Classic.